Hello everyone, Deepa here. Uh, we see uh, lesson 5. Lesson 5 about uh, the ionospheric abnormalities, impact of solar activity. So far we have covered the basic uh, basics of propagation, different modes of propagation, uh, ionospheric uh, layers, reflection and refraction of sky wave uh, by the ionosphere and some critic some important frequencies within high frequency propagation used in communication links and uh, the relationship between MUF and the skip distance. Uh, this lecture we see about the ionospheric abnormalities and impact of solar activity. The electrical characteristics of the ionosphere depend on solar radiation and they vary continuously. The variations of the ionosphere uh, are classified into two categories, normal and abnormal. The normal variations in the characteristics of ion ionosphere daily uh, based on the seasonal thickness of the layer and uh, depends on the height variations of the ionospheric layers. The abnormal variations occur due to the changes in uh, solar activity. The common abnormal variations are due to the following captions, ionospheric storms, uh, sudden ionospheric disturbance, sunspot cycle, fading, whistlers, tides and winds. Now we see the ionospheric effects on radio wave propagation. Here the figure shows the ionospheric effects on uh, radio wave propagation. The ionosphere, as uh, we all know, the ionosphere is the layer of the Earth atmosphere that is ionized by solar and cosmic radiation. It lies about 75 to 1000 kilometers above the Earth. The sun's upper the atmosphere is very hot and it, uh, it produces um, the, a constant stream of plasma ultraviolet and x-ray they affect on uh, earth at, uh, ionosphere the ionization is major important uh, to us because it influences radio wave propagation to distant places on the earth between the transmitter and the receiver on the earth for example uh, the radio wave propagation between the satellite and the earth uh, so here, the ionospheric layers above the earth consist of uh, uh, three main parts named D, E and F regions or also called the layers. The electron density in the highest uh, uh, is the, the electron density is the highest in the upper region, uh, upper region called F region. The F region exists during both daytime and uh, night time. Now let's see the ionospheric effect. Uh, effects on the earth uh, during the daytime and uh, night time. The figure shows the radio wave propagation uh, between the transmitter and the receiver uh, on the earth surface. Here the dinospheric layer uh, this uh, shows uh, this this explains um, the how, how the the radio wave, very low frequency wave propagation uh, takes place during the daytime and uh, night time. During the night time, see during the night time as uh, uh, given image, the given figure below, right hand side. During the night time, given uh, figure below, right side, the ionization, uh, uh, the ionization has uh, only E layer and F2 layers. E layer and F2 layers during the night time. A very low frequency wave transmitted from the trans uh, transmitted from the transmitter and it, the wave is reflected in the E layer itself. So as the wave penetrates into the E layer, then the wave is refracted towards the earth during the night time. During the daytime, uh, uh, see the left hand side, the given uh, image, the um, X-ray, the X-ray or UV rays from the sun increase the ionization increase the ionization of the ionosphere the uh, uh, increase the ionization the d layer the d layer appears and the e layer is enhanced and the f region uh, is splitted into uh, two layers f1 and f2 during the daytime 
so the thickness of the layers uh, announced uh, during the daytime so see uh, so during the night the ionosphere has only the two regions uh, E region and F region and a very low frequency from the transmitter reflects of the ions in the E layer and bounces back towards the earth the sun effects on the ionosphere during the uh, daytime uh, the during the daytime the thickness of the regions are announced the d layer is uh, uh, during the time uh, during the daytime the d layer is normally not dense enough to reflect the radio waves so the signal um, the energy the signal and en signals uh, energy becomes weak uh, become weak and uh, uh, sometimes the information will be lost uh, during the daytime so the more active the sun the thickness of the ionosphere the thickness of the ionosphere increase during the daytime so due to the is uh, higher ionization uh, the signal uh, signals energy uh, will become uh, weak during the day so to elaborate uh, the influence of solar activity we see some the solar effects uh, um, one by one the first what is solar flare solar flare is nothing but its sudden flash of increased brightness on the sun as seen in this figure uh, on the sun surface the solar fla uh, flash uh, releases lot of radiation into space due to the, uh, the radiation uh, the information the uh, the interface the, in the interference is occurred uh, when the wave propagator uh, between the transmitter and the receiver on the earth the next caption uh, the next or next term called ionospheric storm so what is ionospheric storm is a turbulence in the ionosphere of the earth atmosphere such storms are caused by disturbance in the earth magnetic field and the 27 day cycle of the sun uh, th uh, the flash on the sun produces a large variations in the particle and the electromagnetic radiation incident upon the earth such variations uh, leads to disturbance so these disturbance when affecting the ionosphere are known as ionospheric storms this tend to generate large disturbance in the ionospheric density distribution total electron content and the ionospheric current system So this storm, these storms have important uh, to monitor uh, because it sometimes it uh, disrupting satellite communication and um, and interrupt interrupting the flow of electrical energy over the power grids. So the these storms mainly affect the uh, region F2, re reducing its ion density and causing the critical frequency to to be lower than the normal. So these storms usually persist for few days. The next term called uh, uh, sudden ionospheric uh, sudden ionospheric disturbance. So the sudden ionospheric the sudden appearance of solar flash causes sudden uh, ionospheric disturbance. It blocks out the signal completely and uh, the uh, these disturbances persist for a uh, few minutes to an hour uh, this is also very important to monitor uh, important to monitor uh, ionospheric storm and uh, sid and they are recorded by the scientist on the uh, at the ground mm, to uh, when solar flash have taken place uh, and uh, this uh, these disturbance SID causes complete fading and it is called a Dillinger fade out. This fade out um, persists uh, for a few minutes to an hour and uh, the, uh, it does not occur. It does not occur in the lower density layer and it is not in the e, uh, EF1 and F2 regions. And uh, see what is sunspot cycle? Sunspots are the dark, irregularly shaped areas on the surface of the sun which keeps on appearing and disappearing in two cycles every 27 days and every 11 years. <coughs> so, the, uh, 
so this uh, sunspot cycle is a 11 year cycle during which radiations varies drastically this variations due to ultraviolet rays flares uh, the particle radiation so during the sunspot maxima the fre uh, critical frequencies are the highest and they are lowest during the sunspot minima so to minimize the effect of uh, the sunspot cycle the operating frequency is carefully chosen so uh, you can see the sun sunspot in the figure uh, you can see the act you can see an active region on the sun with the dark sunspot the dark sunspot is called uh, the dark dark area called sunspot on the surface of the sun they appear dark because they are cooler than the other parts of the sun see solar flares are nothing but sudden brightness uh, on the su sun surface uh, seen in this figure and let's see uh, the other um, uh, the uh, the way the abnormalities the ionospheric abnormalities variations due to the other factors also whistlers uh, so whistlers are called a radio it is a very low uh, it is uh, it is nothing but it is a very low frequency electromagnetic wave generated by lightning nothing but sun and they are um, transient electromagnetic disturbance which occur na naturally and uh, uh, so th uh, the whistlers consist of electromagnetic waves occur at uh, audio frequency uh, radiation along the direction of the magnetic field of the earth and types of the whistlers are uh, long short and noise uh, the next caption uh, the uh, types and winds they are common in the atmosphere types and winds are common in the atmosphere and uh, they occur due to the motion of turbulence in f2 layer this uh, it introduces a small peak maximum ionization density in the layer at midnight okay the uh, the winds in the ionization are caused by tides okay so the summary of the above topic uh, include ionospheric variation and uh, the ionosp ionospheric abnormalities due to the the solar activity such as uh, sun flares ionospheric storms um, sudden ionospheric disturbance sunspot cycle fading whistlers and tides winds these are the references followed uh, for the ionospheric abnormalities and the impact of solar activity okay hope you enjoyed the uh, lecture thank you